So the topic of today's video is the five worst camera gear purchases that I've made in my filmmaking career so far. I thought this would be a good video to make as there might be a few years out there that are thinking about making similar purchases to these, maybe you've just started out. And since I've already made these purchases, maybe it will make you think a little bit deeper into whether this product's right for you or whether you should put your money into something else. Or maybe you'll confirm that these actually are the products for you and you'll go ahead and make that purchase. Now that that's out of the way, the first thing that I want to talk about today is actually the first bit of camera gear I actually purchased. I think it was about two and a half years ago and that is a GoPro. This is the GoPro Hero 6. I think I got this about two and a half years ago. I just recently got a job as a videographer. I didn't actually have my own camera, so I was just using the works camera for the work that we were doing. I didn't have anything to shoot any personal videos with. And any time that I was away on a holiday, I thought to myself, oh, it'd be great to have a camera right now, you know, to make the kind of videos that you see on YouTube. Uh, the sort of cinematic travel videos. I'm pretty sure that's how a lot of people get into making videos on YouTube. They see these and they think, I could do that as well. Let me like get a camera and start it. So I was the exact same and, you know, I didn't really want to put money into like an expensive camera. I didn't actually have the money at the time. So I thought, okay, I'll treat myself to a GoPro and I'll just start making videos myself. And I'm sure I'm not the only one that gets sucked into GoPro's like advertisement campaign where they show the GoPro in action and the video just looks absolutely flawless. It doesn't really even look like it's been shot on a GoPro, but they say it has... So when I actually got my GoPro and I first took it out of the box, I was all ready to start filming and I set it up and everything. And you know, I learned how to use it and I had actually a holiday coming up. And then I kind of had the sudden realization when I was on the holiday that, you know, my life wasn't actually as exciting. You know, in the ads, they're doing like crazy extreme sports and everything just looks so great. But what I found is when I went on my holiday with my girlfriend, I spent like the majority of the time sitting at the pool, drinking a beer, listening to music, and just getting a little bit drunk before dinner. So so I was never really on that exciting holiday where I was doing all this crazy stuff that would make the GoPro footage like worthwhile and look good. So I ended up just coming home with like a lot of like kind of really boring footage that just wasn't really that interesting because you couldn't make it look that great unless the actual action was great in the first place. So needless to say, I was pretty underwhelmed by what I'd shot and I just kind of decided that it wasn't really going to get me the results that I wanted. For those that have action cameras, like you'll know yourself that the quality isn't that great when you compare it to like more expensive camera setups. Now, obviously, action cameras are used for quite specific reasons. So yeah, if you're going to do something exciting, you want to strap one at your chest or strap it to a mount on your head, and you go do something crazy, then it's going to look pretty cool. So if you are looking to buy an action camera, kind of have an idea of what you're going to use it for because I ended up getting one and I haven't really used it to its fullest potential. I would definitely keep it though because it is something that it's great to have it in the toolbox and you know if the situation calls for it I'll have that ability to pull it out and I'll be able to put it to work really so so again I'm not saying that action cameras aren't a good investment you might need them for what you do you might do something completely different for me and it might be that just you know I just don't have use for it because I'm not doing anything that really deems it necessary or it's exciting enough most phones these days are actually you know in my opinion a lot better than these you know most phones these days shoot in 4k have all the slow motion features and I just think the image quality overall looks better so if you have a decent enough smartphone I would use that instead of like spending the money on a GoPro because you've already got it anyway. So the next thing I want to talk about is my Sony f1.8 50mm lens. If you watch any photographers or videographers on YouTube you'll probably heard all of them at some point talk about what they call the nifty 50. You see them talking a lot about these lenses saying that you know it's the second lens you should have as they're usually quite cheap like I think this one was probably only about 100 pounds or a bit more than that. The problem again similar to the GoPro is I've never really used it that much and to be honest it just sits in my camera bag most of the time and um, through my own fault I don't I don't give it enough of a shot but there's like a few reasons for that. So first of all, one of the reasons why I actually bought it was the fact that my main lens, the 24-105 that I'm using to shoot this video, um, only goes down to f4, so I knew that you know in, in really low light situations I wasn't really going to be able to use that lens if there was not enough light. So I thought, you know, if I get this and it's f1.8, then it would be better for low light. I bought this about a year ago and up until now, I've not done any shoots where I've really needed to go down to f1.4 because the lighting conditions haven't been good enough. 
So when I'm on a shoot and I open up my camera bag and I've only got limited time to set up and you know shoot what I have to shoot, maybe I have a client that's only there for like an allotted time slot and I'm reaching for what lens to use in my camera, I'd probably say about 100% of the time I'm going to grab my 24-105. One, because it is a better quality lens and also because it's a zoom lens and I find it extremely versatile that I can basically just change the focal length as I'm filming and I'm not stuck to like a prime lens at 50mm and that's all I can use. Now a lot of people argue that you should use a prime lens to sort of get used to using your feet to zoom and like getting closer to things and that'll sort of better your skills, make you think about the composition a little bit more. And I totally agree with that, but when it comes to actually being on set and the times against you, you take really any quick shortcut you can get and if that means using a better lens that I think is more versatile then I'm I'm always going to do that. So like I said before, I feel like I have to keep stating this, it's a great lens, you know, it's extremely sharp and all that. So I'm not saying you shouldn't buy one, if you have 50mm great, like you can get great results out of it, I would, wouldn't knock people who buy it, but for me personally it just it's not really been something I've used too much and that's through my own fault, I've not challenged myself enough to use it. And you know, that's probably bad and a little bit lazy on my part, but that's just my opinion. Your situation might be completely different. You might use these lenses all the time, but from my perspective, I probably could have put the money into something that I would have used a little bit more. But hey, it's still actually worth having. I mean, about a hundred pounds, maybe a bit more for, you know, a 1.8 lens. You can't, you can't really go wrong with that. So it's, it's going to stay in my camera bag because I'll use it at some point. I'm sure of it. So the third thing I want to talk about isn't actually a physical product, it's a music license. Now a few years ago I did a video for a friend and basically I had to pick music for that video and I picked it off of a website and I basically had to pay however much it cost for that license for that bit of music. And I don't know what I paid, it probably wasn't a lot, it was probably like £20 or something like that, maybe £25. But I had to kind of factor that into the costs um, and I don't think I had factored it in straight away so I couldn't ask him to give me more money for it so that came out of my own pocket. Now as a one-off that was fine, I thought okay I'll just, you know, the video needs music so I'll just grin and bear it but I then quickly realised that if I'm going to do more of these videos I'm going to need something that works a little bit better so I would suggest not to buy single music licenses every time you do a video for a client. You definitely need to get yourself a membership for a music licensing website. I'm sure you all know about these, they're really, really popular, but I definitely consider getting one of those memberships, especially if you do YouTube videos because you're gonna be using music all the time. You're gonna need music for pretty much every new video. So you don't wanna be paying a standard single license for every single bit of music you buy. You wanna pay you know, like a monthly price and you can get unlimited music and you know that's probably the right way to go about it don't be like me and just buy them individually like because that was the stupidest idea also saying that what i did that was wrong is i bought the membership before i was making youtube videos so what i was doing was basically paying 10 pound a month and not getting the most out of it because i was only using it for certain client work whenever that came around because i had a full-time job at the time so so don't do that don't get one unless you're actually going to use it like you're shooting youtube videos or you're doing constant client work. Or if you have a specific client and let's say you're just doing like a month of work for them, you should buy a membership just for like one month, like even if you have to cancel it after that month because then you'll have unlimited amounts of music for that month to make as many videos as you're planning on making and then you've only paid the £10 subscription fee and not individual price for each individual license for each individual video, if you know what I mean. So don't be like me, don't buy single music licenses. If it suits you, buy a membership or even request that your client buys a membership for a month or whatever just to make the videos so that you're not restricted to one song and you don't have to pay for each one. So my camera just decided not to tell me that it had reached its record limit. So this is the next day, but we'll just carry on. So the fourth thing on my list is lav mics. This is, a, I think it's a Rode Smart Lav basically just clips on you and then the other end goes into, for my case, an iPhone adapter. This just plugs directly into your phone and then you can record it through, I think they've got an app or the voice memos app that's on your phone already. I originally got this for one of my old jobs where I used to shoot a lot of interviews and I thought it would just be a really quick, easy way of capturing audio. I would just clip it to somebody 
and I would just forget about it. But I ran into so many issues. Because this one's really cheap, it would basically break quite a lot on me and it wasn't really reliable. There was a few times the cable disconnected without me even knowing. And there was no way of monitoring this as it was just plugged into my phone and sitting over the other side of the room. Also, just the sound quality with these really isn't that great. I ran into a lot of like rustling from people's like t-shirts and things like that. And it picked up a lot of ambient sound that which I really didn't like and it ruined quite a lot of my interviews. I basically had to you know, plug this into my phone, set it to record, clip it up to the to the person that I was interviewing and then leave it with them. I would often ask them if they had a pocket that I could put it in, which probably wasn't very professional, but it was just the way I did it at the time. And I remember one time the person that I was interviewing didn't actually have any pockets. And I basically just said to them if they could just put it behind the chair. And of course, what happened was at the end of the interview, they were in a rush to get out of there. They stood up really quickly. My phone went flying. And I was just left standing there feeling a bit depressed, wondering if my iPhone had smashed. And also the client probably felt quite embarrassed, so it probably wasn't a good idea all round. Of course, lav mics do have their purpose and can be useful. There's definitely more expensive ones that do a far better job, have much better sound quality and are a lot more reliable. But I just got this one because it was cheap and it really wasn't worth it. I was better off investing in something like this boom mic that I'm using to record and just booming it over the, the client slightly out of frame. I definitely got better results from that. If you are gonna go for one, I'd suggest spending a little bit more on a better quality one than I did. Just make sure you only use it in like the right situations. Now the last thing on my list is cheap lighting. I actually still use the cheap lights that I bought about two years ago. Um, they're actually being used to light this video right now. They're basically just big soft boxes on mic stands with a light bulb that you screw in inside it. Again, these are really cheap. I got two of these for about 60 or 70 pounds. And every video you've seen on this YouTube channel so far has been lit with these lights. So they do do a good job, but if you are looking for a slightly higher quality light and a slightly higher quality look to your videos, then I would suggest putting the money into something a little bit more expensive, maybe only getting one better light than the two sort of cheaper ones. Because these are so cheap, the materials aren't the best. I've broke a few of the bulbs that you screw inside, some of them just stopped working, and a few of the mic stands have broke before, so I've had to buy new ones in the past. They also have to constantly be plugged in, so you couldn't attach any battery to these lights, which is a bit of a downside, so you're always going to have to find some sort of power outlet if you're going to use them on set. I've always been fine with using these lights for the majority of things that I do, but now that I'm getting a little bit further on and I'm shooting sort of different things, I think my next step will be to invest in some higher quality light just to give my videos a slightly better look. At the end of the day, any light's better than no light. I've used them for so long that, you know, if you're just starting out, you're on a budget, you'd be better off putting your money into a better quality camera, better quality audio, and then getting some cheap lights. So I'm actually skeptical to put this on the list now that I think about it because I've been using them, I still use them. If you are on a budget, get cheap lights. But, you know, if you want a slightly better quality look and you have some extra money in your budget, then I would consider buying a better quality light. So that's it for my five worst gear investments that I've ever made. I feel like I have to say again that all these products are great if you are just starting out and I'm not discouraging anybody from purchasing any of them. But this is just my experience with owning them and what I would say to someone if they were just starting out and looking to buy these products. That's all for this video. I hope this helps somebody out. If you like this kind of content, consider leaving me a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. I'll see you guys in the next one.